Hello everybody, my name is Colin, welcome to the workshop. Today I'll be showing you how to make a flower sculpture thing out of leftover food wrappers and off bits of wood. Doesn't that sound exciting? One of those. When it's done you can give it to your significant other, so you buying a present. Right, let's crack on. Now remember, the workshop environment can be a dangerous place. Health and safety, there's no accident. Now, for the base, you're going to need a piece of old scrap wood. I happen to have this. Now, this was, or is, part of the garden. It's an old railway sleeper that we uh, inherited when we moved in. So first job, is you want to make sure it's nice and square. So I'm going to take a section of, what's that, 100, 195, just so it ends up nice and square. So I'm going to cut out this section here. Now, there's a few ways to do that. You can use one of those. If you've got a weak spare, you can use one of those. Or alternatively, you can use one of these. Now, for some reason, it doesn't look very square on camera, but it is. There you go. If, like me, your chop saw is not big enough to go all the way through the timber, then you can always just finish it off by hand. Now, here's a top tip. If you're finding it quite difficult to saw wood with an old rusty saw like this one, why not get some candle wax and rub it on the blade and it should slide through like a knife through butter. Frozen butter, but butter nevertheless. Now, once you've cut your piece of wood, you'll find it's quite rough. Now, pieces of wood this big can actually be really tricky to use, not least because you can see here that my saw that I use in the end actually only cut halfway through. So it's left me a little line. If you get that, don't worry, don't panic. You can simply use a plane and smooth the piece of wood down. This here is a plane of thickness, though, you may know. And basically, it's an electronic version of that, and you can lower and higher this plate up. This spins round, and then you slide the timber through it, makes it nice and smooth. If you haven't got any of this fancy kit, or if you haven't got a bit of wood this big, then don't worry. Because you could always just get some 2v1 offcuts going together and that would make quite a nice rustic base as well. So whatever you've got lying to hand, use that. The important thing is that you're having to go and be a bit creative. Now, mind your ears.
Now when you've gone round and planed all the wood up, you end up with something looking a bit like this. So I've done a nice edge, bevelled all the way round. This needs sanding now and staining. One thing to notice is if you're planing along the grain like that, you should be fine. If you plane this way against the grain, when you get to the end, this can snap out. So one way to do it is to plane one way, then half way around, turn it, and plane the other way. So you're effectively going into the middle, and that stops snap out. Okay, so we have our wood cut and we have it beveled. The next thing to do is sand it. You can, as always, go manual. So start off with something like 80 grit, tells you on the back what sort of paper it is. Then move up to 120, 120 is finer, so 80 grit will get this off. I mean, that might take you a couple of weeks, but you can do it. Next option is just a normal electric sander. Health and safety. If you've got a hoover, you can plug that in, save you breathing in all the dust. So it just so happens that I've got one of these, which has got a um, hoover built into it. There you go, nice and smooth, no splinters. Take as long as you need to with that. I might go over it another bit more, but I won't bore you with it. Right, now that's all standing, the next thing we're going to do is to try and fit a central support. So, first job, find the centre of your piece. Right. Then you want to work out how big your support is. So this here is... about 11 and a half mil. I don't know what that is in American. And then on my little gauge here, I've got 11 and a half. You've got the drill just fits in. And then what you want to do is to tape your drill. So what I was about to say was to tape your drill to ensure that you don't drill a hole all the way through the base. Also, when you're drilling, make sure you keep your drill at 90 degrees to the piece you're working on otherwise the stand will lean and because it's wood you won't be able to bend it. If you have one then it may be an idea to use a pillar drill like the one you can see here. For mine I had to put a small plate on the bottom to lift it above the brackets and then centralise the bit before turning it on to make sure I was on my predetermined mark. Now all was going well until I turned it on and then it started shaking so badly that the camera sounds stopped working. Right, hopefully after the shock of the drill has finished, we'll do a little test fit. Lovely. So, a little bit of a tap and some glue, and that will be German good and tight. But we won't put it in just yet, because next job is a bit of varnish. Okay, so this is the final stage for the base. As you can see, it has been nicely sanded down. I've also used this monster of a drill just to put a nice detail in the top. Now we're going to give it a few coats of varnish and I will be using Ron Seal's interior varnish. The reason I'm using that is because I found it in that massive pile of paint that came with the house. Okay, a few coats of that, let it dry and we should be good to go. Now, you can use whatever sort of food wrapper you like. And what you need to do is, first of all, remove the food. And second of all, flatten out the flapjack wrapper, like so. And then fold it into a triangle. And then fold it into another triangle. And fold it into another triangle. And what you'll end up with is a little pocket and you fold the top of the flapjack wrapper or crisp wrapper or whatever you have inside until you make 
the cone shape, like that. And then you fold it again, and that holds it all together. And you end up with a little cone. Now, depending on what you use, you can get all sorts of different colours. So here's some previously constructed. And what we're going to do is we're going to fasten these together to make a sculpture. Brilliant. Now, you will need a few more. So here's some I previously prepared in every colour you can think of, as long as it's beige. Okay, so we are ready for the assembly stage of the process. And what we're going to try and do is stick these together to form a sphere using hot glue. Now hot glue is indeed hot and glue, so if you stick your hands together, it will really hurt all the time that it's happening. All we do is add a little bit of glue to the base and gently hold in place. It goes off and then add another little bit of glue. You don't need much. And it'll get really stringy as well. So you just have to wrap itself around. Okay. Now this will take the longest amount of time out of all the processes, but that is what you're aiming for. Now, in the comments, write down how many of these you think it's going to take to make a full sphere, how long it's going to take me, and how many glue sticks. There is no prizes for the winner. And there you have the finished piece. So you just need to let the glue set for a little while. And the next job is attach it to the base. So we need the base, the support, the smallest hammer I could find, and some glue. Being very careful with the glue. Put glue on there and then find the bit that you'd like for the top. A pair of recycled flowers. So there you have it. It might not be Dave by Michelangelo, but it might be a fun project for the kids to do in the summer holidays or DT with a bit of supervision. And it only takes roughly 60, 65, depending how well you pack them, little wrappers to make the flathead. Excellent, right. See you next time.